so today I have something a tiny bit different for you. I know I have done a few like DIY videos in the past, but today I'm gonna show you five easy like Halloween DIYs to do. Now I'm bringing you this video in collaboration with another YouTube channel, which is called Batweb Gothic Reviews. I have mentioned them before because of their amazing haul videos, but I came across some of their DIY videos and I absolutely loved them. Their gothic DIYs are so like completely different to any DIYs I have seen before. They take something which you wouldn't usually see that you could like edit or alter and just make something even cooler and even more spooky. So we had a little chat and we decided what we do is we'd make a collaboration video where I make five like Halloween-y like gothic items and then they do like five Halloween-y gothic DIY items as well. And then you can watch both of our videos and you will end up with 10. So I will link down below both their channel and their video so that you can both check out all of their other videos and also see five other DIYs. So for my DIYs, I wanted to make some things which were not only easy but relatively cheap to make. I have mentioned that I am a full-time student. So money is tight. So everything I'm showing you today is kind of either kind of recycled bits or things that you can buy relatively cheaply from like craft stores and I also wanted to make them relatively easy so that everyone can do it you don't have to have any like major skill in crafting and DIY to give these a go these items would be like fantastic for any kind of like gothically themed home um, or if you're just looking for some cool Halloween things to make I'm gonna start with some Halloween pillows. So I have made two pillows to show you today. This one, which says Happy Halloween, and this one, which is covered in bats. As you can see, they kind of have different looks to them. This one is very soft and squishy. It's definitely the more like comforting pillow. And this one is a little bit more structured. It's got like a thicker material. And it's a little bit more sturdy. And you can probably tell that behind me, I am a little bit obsessed with cushions and um, pillows and things and I have been waiting to do these DIYs for ages. I will insert a clip now to show you how exactly I made these. So to make these two cushions you're going to need a sewing machine, some scissors, a needle and thread, um, old t-shirts and Halloween fabric and some stuffing. The kitten is optional. So to begin with I started by clearing the desk off a bit and I just set my sewing machine up so it was ready to use. So then I took my, this is a tea towel I got from TK Maxx and it's really really handy because it's got a print on either side which means that it looks really really good so I I folded it in half and I started pinning along the edges just to make sure it was all kept in place and it was going to look nice and even now one side is obviously doesn't need sewing because it's already like part of the bent and folded over um cover so once I had pinned it all I started sewing so I just started sewing down the first edge um make sure that you take the pins out you don't run over the pins because this can actually break the needle of your sewing machine depends where you've placed the pins like on this side that I'm just doing here the pins are quite far in so it didn't matter too much now this is where you have a bit of an option you can either stop there and turn it inside out then you could add like a zip or you could add buttons, whichever you prefer. And here I'm just putting a cushion in. So that is like a removable cushion cover sorted. Um, but I much prefer to have mine kind of all sealed in. The stuffing I'm using is washable as well. So I can just wash the pillow as a whole. I don't need to take the cover off separately. So I just turned it back inside out and sewed the last bit and left a little hole. Now you're going to try and turn it the right way around. So you have to stuff it all through this hole. I made the hole a little bit too small really easy to fix you just take some scissors and you just cut up the stitching a tiny tiny bit and pull it and it'll open up a little bit now that it was big enough i was able to turn it the right way around and it was ready to kind of put the stuffing in now you can use a pen to kind of point out the corners a little bit i quite liked the rounded corners to this so i didn't bother like making it too much of a point and then you are left with a tiny little hole to do the stuffing now i'm going to use this cushion just because i have it and it's kind of an old one and I just, I couldn't fit the whole cushion through the little hole, obviously, so I'm just cutting off the outer layer. Now, where this cushion has been a cushion for a long time, it's kind of set in a certain shape. So I take tiny little bits at a time just to make sure it's all fluffed up. I did put some bigger clumps in there and it was just a little bit, like, misshapen because of it. So I did spend some time just kind of patting it and scrunching up inside and kind of fluffing it out to make it a little bit more nicer and softer as a cushion. 
once you've finished this you just need to fold the edges in now you can do it on a sewing machine but because the tea time using is quite thick it's kind of like a fleecy one i decided to hand sew it and honestly it doesn't take that long two to three minutes just to hand sew this last bit and just make sure your thread matches the thread that's inside the sewing machine so it's the same color now once that's finished you can just fluff it around a bit and there you've got your first halloween pillow or cushion so the next one i made is out of an old t-shirt now if you've got any old t-shirts which you're thinking of throwing away because they're the wrong color or the wrong size you can definitely recycle them quite easily so i took this one it has a nice repetitive back pattern on so i thought it looked really cool and i just pinned along the bottom bit of it the bottom hem of the t-shirt is going to be straight so it's it's a good guideline i then folded it in half just to make a straight line and give myself another guide as to where i wanted to sew the top i decided to cut from underneath one armpit to the other armpit which is quite handy because it had like a repetitive pattern so it wasn't like i was going to be like cutting through a design or anything so you can do this with a with pins to make a pin line or you can just draw it with a pen i did both just so i knew extra where i was going I then sewed from one armpit to the other armpit and this just kind of it closes off the top of the t-shirt and you no longer have to worry about the sleeves or the bit you stick your head through again make sure that you don't run over any pins it is slightly harder to do with t-shirts just because they're a bit thinner and softer but it does give you a whole kind of different type of cushion at the end so now you can see that i've sewed just under that kind of rough guideline of a line i drew with pen and now you don't need the top bit as you can see it's all sewn off you can't really do much with it um you can cut it off and save it for something else so i just cut mine straight off at the top i'm sure you could possibly make a smaller cushion um or do something with the scrap fabric but as long as you cut on the like above the sewing line then you're absolutely fine so once i have cut along this line i now have you know the majority of my cushion done i have one side that's unsewn which is the bottom line again if you want to add a zip or buttons this would be the perfect time to do so um but i'm just going to do the same thing again and just completely seal it up with the stuffing inside so i started sewing along as you can see my sewing machine decided not to work so i had to start again and uh, this time i made sure i made a big enough gap although the material was thinner and a little bit more easy to use so it was kind of easier to shove everything through the hole and so once I had shoved it through the hole I kind of pointed out the ends again and I did have a little bit of stuffing left from the cushion I used previously so I used that last bit of of stuffing kind of broke it up a little bit and then I ended up having to go and use some toy stuffing which I got from Hobbycraft which is actually a little bit softer than the other cushion because it's meant for soft toys um, and it quite it went quite nicely with the actual feel of the t-shirt it gives it a really nice overall soft feeling now because the material is a bit thinner I did think about possibly doing this on the sewing machine when I put it on the sewing machine to sew I just felt like it was a bit too bulky I didn't want to break the sewing machine so I decided to go back in with my needle and thread and hand sew it just with the other one it didn't take very long at all the only thing with this one is because i was doing it on a purple fabric it did show up a little bit more but it's right at the bottom in the corner so you can't really notice it so once i had finished sewing i just made sure it was all neat made sure there was no hanging threads anywhere cut off any loose threads and i was done so that's how i made my cushions and as i have said you can probably make endless amount of course there are so many variations of these cushions that you can make it's completely up to you you could add zips you could put actual cushions inside and just make these removable covers but for the sake of ease in my opinion i have shown you the simplest way to get some cool gothic halloween pillows so my next craft is something i am so excited about and it is my halloween wreath now i did make a halloween wreath last year and it was pretty abysmal so this year i actually wanted to collect a few things beforehand so again i wanted to make this in the simplest way possible and i feel like it's a really really easy craft for you to do it does look really effective and buying these like new can be so expensive especially if you want it like a customized one so someone else to make it for you but honestly it's one of the easiest little diys out there you just need to have a good eye for collecting little things so just as before i will now show you how exactly i made my 2016 halloween 
Halloween wreath, you of course need a wreath, either pre-bought or made yourself. Um, I also got some moss just to make it look a bit more interesting, and then collect loads of like autumn-y, like Halloween-y craft bits. All of these things I just got from a craft store, and if you get a really wide variation, you can just pick and choose what you want. You also need a hot glue gun. I've used different types of glue and adhesive, but hot glue is the quickest and simplest version of sticking all this down. So I got this wreath from Poundland. I absolutely hated it. I got it last year. Just pulled everything off so I had a plain wreath. Now I know you can get plain ones from TK Maxx for about four or five pounds, um, but if you can get one cheaper and just pull off the decorations they've already put on it, it's a lot easier. You can also make it, it's pretty simple, but for the sake of ease, I've just got a pre-bought one. Now I got this dried moss from Hobbycraft. You can find it literally all over the internet. It's really, really cheap and I love it. I think it's a great way to make things look a little bit more enchanted and spooky. Um, but basically I'm just hot gluing this, this dried moss down and I'm sort of putting it under little bits of twigs just to kind of keep it in place. Um, I then sort of like looked at kind of what positioning I wanted and once I was ready I started decorating this pumpkin. Now this is a paper mache pumpkin I got from Hobbycraft. I was going to paint it but I thought I'd do this pumpkin with permanent pens just so I could get a little bit more detail in the stalk, um, also around the face and I kind of, I also wanted to sort of give it a little bit more definition with the kind of bumps of the pumpkin. Now these are a really really good way of making it even more to your taste but you can of course buy like already pre-orange and green pumpkins if you want to, it's completely up to you um, but I just kind of wanted mine to be a certain look. Um, I then kind of worked out a good positioning for it and I hot glued it down so I put hot glue right at the bottom of the pumpkin just to kind of stick it to the bit of the reef that I wanted to and then my advice is to put loads and loads of hot glue on the back of the pumpkin no one's going to see the back of the pumpkin if it's a reef because normally you have wreaths hanging up against doors or windows so you don't really see it if it's too messy at the bottom now it was quite messy at the front so what I did is I literally just took a bit of this moss which is another great use for this moss just put a bit of hot glue on and just covered all the messy bit and voila it's gone and it I feel like it looks pretty smooth now I kind of wanted to make this look a little bit more autumn-y and cover up a little bit of the gaps and things so I got these leaves. These leaves are like, they're just fabric leaves, I got them from the works, I think they were 50p or something ridiculous. But I stuck a few on there just to kind of see what sort of positioning I wanted. Now when I was decorating the bat I took a different approach, I put a few kind of little details in with the pens and then I just took my black acrylic paint and I just painted over the rest. I feel like for bigger items like this where it's kind of more of a block colour and there's sort of less definition in it, just go for acrylic paint, it's a lot easier. Now acrylic paint I absolutely love because it's one of the easiest paints to use, it sticks to absolutely everything and also it will dry quickly if you just use a hairdryer, just shove the hairdryer on it for 30 seconds and it's dry. Now I kind of positioned the bat, thought about where I wanted to go, this bat's amazing because it's flat on the back which means it's really really easy to stick to stuff. So, I mean, I just stuck this down to the moss. I put a little bit of glue behind each of its wings. I also went in at the back as well and put some hot glue there just to kind of make sure it's fully secured. I then went back to these leaves and positioned them around. Now, I kind of had, like, the base of my, like, my whole wreath. I had the bat and the pumpkin in the right position. And now it's just up to you as to what kind of embellishments you want. I got this massive platter from... Hobbycraft, I wasn't quite sure kind of what I wanted to do, but I, I I thought I'd just stick to kind of bats and pumpkins. These bats were a little bit too big, and I found these tiny little sticker bats on this platter, so I thought I'd use those. Um, they were super, super easy to use just because they were already sticky at the back, and also they weren't so sticky that you couldn't like reposition them, which is pretty, pretty handy. Um, so I stuck those down, and I, I went for little bats just because I felt like there was already a big bat, and I didn't want to kind of make him lose the limelight. I also got some Halloween confetti and I stuck a few little shiny bats down just to make it a little bit more interesting. Now I got these stickers from Hobbycraft, I wanted this one called Trick or Treat because I feel like a wreath kind of needs writing on it sometimes. So I got this sticker and I literally hot glued it to the top just as kind of a finishing touch and I squished it all down and made sure it was all stuck. So that's how I made my Halloween wreath but obviously the options are endless and it's completely your taste. I absolutely love Halloween wreaths. I've been looking out to see if I can find any other creations. People are just starting to make those, so definitely send me a picture if you do end up making a wreath. Just tag me on Instagram, I'll be so excited to see it. I am considering making some more this year because it's been so fun making this one.
thing I made were some candle holders. I have been really into candles this year and I thought I'd do a little bit of recycling and make some candle holders. So I made these little spooky face ones. I did actually get some really nice white pumpkin candles from HomeSense quite recently and I was talking about these tea lights being slightly bigger than the usual ones. These are absolutely perfect for putting in jars. They fit so well in there and they fill the whole kind of bottom of it and give it a really nice look. Now this is a really, really simplistic thing to make. I wanted it to kind of look like a dripping wax scary pumpkin face and they look good during the day and they also look super spooky at night now i do realize that some people don't like candles but i have also kind of made a version where you just need a electronic candle um it comes out with pretty much the same effect it's just obviously one is a little bit more safe. I love this craft. It's literally one of the easiest things to Again, do. Again, this is really easy to alter to your own taste. So let's get on with how I made these. So to make this tea light holder, you're gonna need a glass jar, some black acrylic paint, paint brushes, um, permanent pens or tissue paper, and also a hot glue gun. It's quite a simple way to do this, and there are loads of different versions of it. So basically you need to start off by cleaning the jar, getting the stickers off, any residue off it, just so it's a really clean surface, and then draw a face on it. I've gone for a classic pumpkin face, but you can make it as scary or as cute and happy as you want it to be. I then coloured in the design that I've drawn. Now I did this like orange because that's going to be what you see. Whatever colour you choose is the colour that's going to shine through when the tea light's in there. You can do this with tissue paper which is a different option and version of making this craft. I just find tissue papers a lot harder to use. You can't get it quite as precise so that's why I go for permanent pen instead. Now I want this to have like a dripping candle like wax effect to it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my hot glue gun and I'm doing like a blob of glue and then trailing it up the top of the jar. Now you can do as little or as much as you want of this. I like to kind of go for a medium dripping effect. I don't want it to be too over the top. I have made it before where it's completely covered in drips. It does look really cool but I feel like you can go a little bit overboard. So now I just take my black acrylic paint. Now this is just going to block out the rest of the light. So I cover this jar completely in black paint, but I do leave the actual face because as I said, that's where the light's gonna be shining through. Now, it, you can be kind of quite messy with this. I kind of left a few little gaps. So there will be a few kind of little hints of light coming through. And I'm hoping this is just gonna bring out the dripping effect. Now, once this is finished, just leave it somewhere to dry and the paint will all dry. It kind of goes a little bit of a matte color. Then you can put your tea light or your electronic like candle in there. And basically it will just shine it through the face and give it this really cool like spooky look. I absolutely love this craft. I think it's an amazing way to reuse jars. As you can probably see from the clip, it's so easy to personalize these. I'm sure you can make them all year round. If you are someone who likes to celebrate Valentine's Day um, or Easter, you could just put hearts or eggs or bunnies or something it's on it. It's a great way to recycle um, different glass jars. I also feel like it's a slightly safer way to have your candles burning. number four is a little movable mummy so this is the mummy i made he does move you can position him into any little position you like now i just use this box to position mine and have him sort of sitting on the end of this box um, i am planning to put him on a shelf i think that these look awesome if you make a few of them and so easy to make you can have them in any position so you can have them in a funny position a serious like classic mummy position they're just so easy and it's definitely a good little kids craft i think of course you need a little bit of adult supervision for bending the metal that's inside so here. here is how i made my little movable mummy figure so to make this mummy you're going to need some kind of cloth or bandages this is like a creepy cloth and i got it in a white color some kind of wire some maybe jewelry making wire googly eyes and some scissors so I started with this wire, I chose like a thicker jewellery making wire because it kind of, it bends enough but it's still quite sturdy. I then kind of just took a long piece, folded it in half and just made like the outline of some legs and a loop for the head. I then wanted to make the arm so again I just did the same thing, wrapping the wire around so it kind of gave the rough shape of a body. It doesn't matter too much because once you have actually wrapped it up you can alter it still it is very pliable i did add a little bit round the top of the head as well just to bulk it out 
So using this large cloth, now this is a kind of cloth you're meant to hang across like a window or something, so I'm cutting it into little strips just to make it a bit easier. If you have some kind of rough looking bandage, this will work just as well. I just quite liked the texture of this. I liked how it kind of frayed a little bit and there was little bits sticking out. I think it gave it like quite a kind of realistic mummy look in an odd way. Um, but it would also look really good with just a bandage, like a thin bandage. So I just wrapped it all around the limbs. I got it just making sure I was covering everything. I did a couple of layers as well just to ensure that none of like the wire stuck out. I then moulded it to the size of the end of this box so it could sit really easily on a shelf and then I just stuck on some googly eyes and that was how I made my mummy. It's really easy to make and I'm hoping to make a few different ones. Of course, just like the other crafts, the options are endless. You could make whatever you wanted using the same kind of layout. I was thinking of possibly making a little Frankenstein, a little Dracula, just to kind of make a whole little family of shelf sitters. least one of my favorite things to make and decorate my room with is bat bunting. Now I'm not sure how well you can see but my room is decorated with bat bunting. I have it absolutely everywhere and I do get quite a few questions as to where I buy it from. Here is your answer. I did get a like a make your own set from Hobby Car. And in my opinion although it was quite cheap it definitely was not worth the money that I spent on it. Because making bat bunting is so easy and so cheap to do. So here's my fifth craft, how to make bat bunting to just spook up any room. So to make this Halloween bunting you're going to need some thick card, I went for a black card because I'm making bats, some kind of ribbon, I chose an orange ribbon, some googly eyes, something to poke holes with, uh, like a sticky label sheet or some white stickers, some scissors and also a light coloured pencil, preferably white but I went for a light yellow and also some kind of template. So you're going to need a template just to make sure that it all looks even. Of course you could hand draw it if you wanted to. You could just print out a like stencil off of, I'm sure there's loads on Google Images, but this was just a, a cardboard bat I happened to have. So I just drew round him. I drew round him 10 times because I wasn't quite sure how many I'd need. And it turned out I cut out a few more than I needed, but it was quite good to have a few extra just in case anything went wrong. So because I've drawn it around it in a lighter colour, it meant I can see where I wanted to cut it out. Now you could do this with so many different Halloween things. You could make pumpkins, you could make like candy corns, you could make anything. It just depends what colour card you're using and obviously what stencil you're using. But just use a pencil or a pen that's going to show up. Now as you can see, because I've used a light pencil, it does show up on like the round the edges. So make sure you have that at the back of the bunting so you can't see it. Now it's time to kind of poke holes in. So I'm poking holes right at the top parts of the two wings. At first I used like a sharp like wooden, I think it was like a chopstick or something, but it wasn't sharp enough. So for the rest of the bats, I just used the end of like a comb. This was kind of like a hair sectioning off comb. So it's quite sharp at the end and it just meant I could get a nice clean hole. Now of course you could also use like a hole punch if you wanted a bit neater. So then I wanted to add the faces so I started with these googly eyes which were really really cool because you could just peel them off and there was no kind of fiddling around with backing paper. I also wanted to make little fangs so I just took one of the sticky labels and I cut a square and then I cut it again down the middle and made them into two little fangs. I think it just gave it a really cute little look and a little bit more personality than just a plain black bat. So then I just continued and repeated this step all the way through. I did make the eyes like different positions, I put some closer together, some further apart. I just wanted them to look all slightly different, they all had their own kind of individual look. And as you can see the fangs are also different, some are thinner, some are longer. You can get kind of like triangular white stickers which would work just as well but I'm kind of just working with what I got. So now that I had all of my bats ready, it was time to thread them onto the ribbon. So as I said, I chose an orange ribbon because I thought it'd be quite nice and Halloween-y. I did get this in my Hobbycraft Halloween platter. And the holes I punched were pretty small, which is good and bad. It's good because it kind of keeps them in place. If you punch a hole in that that's too big, they will slide round and they end up overlapping and things. But it was also, because they were so small, it was hard to actually get this ribbon through. So what I'd do is I'd put the ribbon behind the hole and then I'd use the end of my comb or like 
whatever you're using to punch the hole originally just to kind of push the ribbon through a little bit and guide it through and once you kind of get hold of it you can pull it through easy enough and once the bats are all on there you can see that it looks a little bit messy this ribbon's all kind of twisted up and stuff because I have been kind of pulling it through willy-nilly so I tied like a little knot at the end to make a loop this stopped them from sliding off the end but also gives you a way to hang this garland up once you've finished and then I put all of the bats on the flat surface as you can see I'm just doing it on the floor and I just slid them along with my hand and tried to make sure that it was all straight. Now this isn't like a necessary step, it's just because I thought it would look a little bit neater if the ribbon was relatively straight. I know that there were a few like little twists and turns in it still, but it kind of generally keeps them all looking kind of neat and facing the right way. Once I'd finished, I tied another little loop at the end. As you can see, I left a bit like loose because I didn't know how long I'm wanting to get this garland, but for now, I was pretty pleased with it. I felt like all of the bats had loads of different personality. And as I said, you can do this with loads of other things. It doesn't just have to be bats. Of course, just like all my other crafts, it's so easy to personalize this in your own way. You don't have to make bat bunting. You could make pumpkin bunting. You could, it, the, the options are quite literally endless. Another little tip is that these of course are not waterproof because I have um, just done them on card. Now if you are to print something out or make any stencils as you saw I did in the video, if you just laminate between, them between like the whole process of putting holes in them and things, it will make the card waterproof and they will probably survive outside a little bit better than these. Those would. were my five spooky like gothic Halloween crafts. I hope you enjoyed I'm them. excited to see if any of you guys get a chance to make these. And if you do, as I said, please, please, please do put a picture up on Instagram and tag me or even make a video and let me know about it because I'd be really, really interested to see what kind of creations you come up with. I am obsessed with DIY and crafting. I think it's such like a therapeutic thing to do. Also, it can also be a lot cheaper than just buying it new and you can get things to your taste a little bit I more. I have sometimes spent hours searching for something specific on the internet and never finding the right one. I've just gone and made it and it's ended up just how I wanted as it. As I said, this was a collaboration with Batweb Gothic Reviews. Again, I will leave all their information down in the description so you can go check them out. They're an absolutely lovely, lovely pair of people. They do amazing reviews and DIYs and their kind of style of video is completely unique to anything else that I've seen on the internet and I can guarantee if you're looking for something new and interesting to watch you will love their channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed watching these craft DIY videos please do let me know. I have got some other like craft projects that I am planning to do before Halloween and I would be really happy to share them with you if you are interested in seeing more. I hope that you have a spooky September. If you've got any questions or comments please do leave them below. If it's sunny where you are I hope you're enjoying the shade and I will see you next time.